You know, I was saying living, you know, when you when you start to live in the present rather than, you know, always looking into the future or, or dwelling on the past, uh, it really is like you've woken up. And I feel like the, the Baca have done that for me. They've woken me up because I, I used to live in a kind of fantasy world of the future and, you know, you're thinking about all the time about the future and stuff. But you get caught up and you kind of, the the present passes you by, you know, and you're not even aware of it. And uh, sort of makes life longer when you live in the present present moment. Somehow extends out the time, you know, so subjective time is a lot longer. And uh, so I, I've learned that from the, from the Bayaka. But, you know, it does have its disadvantages in, uh, in the modern world, which is fast closing in on things now. And... Uh, uh, even the Baaka as a as a cohesive group are, are, are fast uh, sort of undergoing some kind of m m change. You know, they're they're going in different directions. It's not all the same kind of old, strong community the way it used to be. There's still that that sense that deeper sense of community, you know, um, among sort of all Baaka, but, but uh, people are going in different directions now. They're not all sort of living, doing the same thing the way they the way they used to when I first came here. Um, and so, you know, cult, their culture is changing, although they still have this orientation to the present, and it's become a kind of a disadvantage uh, the more they partake in the modern world, the more the modern world closes in, in on them and me, because... Uh, I, I too live now in the present, and it's very difficult uh, when you have to think about the future, make certain plans, or it's very difficult if you're oriented tated to it towards the present. These um, confrontations I periodic periodically have with the uh, authorities, um, and I don't want to make too big a thing of them. Because, uh, you know, none of them have really been that serious in the end. I mean, I, uh, a couple of high points were when, or low points in terms of my relations with the authorities, or when I wanted to move the Baaka away from the sawmill and, and from the town of Bayanga and, and, and to, uh, just, a, just a couple of kilometers, really. Just across the, 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 the Kenya stream and, and up the hill and then and, 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 and a kilometer or so down the road. Uh, so I had a problem because the mayor didn't want it and most of the Bayanga population didn't want it because they were... Uh, you know, there were the, it was, it, the moving was not to the advantage immediately of the mayor who used to really abuse the Baka, having them forced labor in the village a few times a week, the men. And uh, also the Bayanga villagers, who uh, a lot of them had come uh, for the sawmill that had now closed down, and uh, they were from Savannah. And now to make a living, they were making a living from the Bayaka with these um, palm leaves. And uh, so they liked it that the Bayaka were right there, sort of at the edge of town. <clears throat> and so none of these people wanted me to move the Bayaka. But, uh, you know, in the end, I was able to move them. It wasn't, uh, you know, a, a bad thing. Uh, I, you know, I got the chief of the fisher people, uh, whose Bayaka these traditionally were, um, to, he came out in support of me. And uh, then we did some maneuvering, and then I was able to move the Bayaka, and we founded a new village. And I've had a few other uh, times when I've had... Uh, been arrested or something by by the authorities, but really it's not a serious thing. Um, I've been living here now 22 years, and uh, you know I've been in the jail once for a couple of hours, and I've been arrested a few times, and uh, you know always released, you know allowed to go back to my own house even when I'm under arrest, and the arrests have never <clears throat> really lasted that long, and. I would say I've been received pretty well here, you know, and uh, I mean, you know, you think about um, Adam Odialo from Guinea who went to the United States and, you know, was shot 47 times by the New York police you know, just sitting on the porch in front of his house. And, I mean, compared to that, I mean, here I am uh, 22 years later and I'm a 
citizen of the Central African Republic. I have dual nationality. I'm, I have uh, my American nationality and Central African Republic nationality. So, I mean, there's quite a difference in uh, hospitality, I would say, between the two countries and the two cultures. And so the small problems I've had with the authorities is not really, a, <clears throat> for me, a serious thing. You know, it's just part of life here. And, you know, when it's happening, I, it's a drag. But, you know, when it's over, it's something to tell a story about. Uh, I would say more of the, the more bigger, pro more serious problem is what the immigration to this area is doing to the Bayaka and the relations between the Bayaka and the, um, and the Bantu, who are mostly uh, immigrants uh, to this region from <clears throat> areas uh, farther north, and mostly the savannah. And that's a much more serious uh, kind of problem that's uh, going on, and more unstoppable in a way, uh, the immigration anyhow. It's sort of a demographic movement, really, and uh, those are very hard to reverse.